Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is Sunday, April 7th, and this is going to be a stitch with me. No voiceover though. I am actually going to be talking to you while I am stitching, you know, live. Just, I have a whole, I made notes this morning, so I have a whole piece of paper with stuff to talk to you guys about. Just stuff that's happened in the last couple of days and how the weekend has gone and I am going to really try to not shake the tripod. <laughs> um, if you saw the setup, it's clipped to a side table. Yeah. Okay, so I know I'm doing this section right here. What symbol is this? Why? Uh... Oh, I didn't finish. It needs to go all the way over here and then down here. Okay. All right. So before I get started stitching, let me show you a couple things that somebody had asked me about. Well, somebody asked me about what needle I was using. So these are the needles I use. They are pony black and I use size 26 on here. I just really like them. They're very smooth. They work really well. And they come in all the sizes that normal needles do. You know, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. When I bought them, I bought 24, 26, and 28. So, and they have them everywhere. Etsy has them. I want to say I got them from Maydell, M-A-Y-D-E-L. But if you put in Pony Black, it'll pop up. So those are the needles that I use. And then... So I wanted something, there are four, there are seven beads in this project. And if you've ever worked with Mill Hill beads, you know opening that package can be pretty precarious. Now, I do have this for beading. This is, I want to say, Elizabeth Turner. This is a needle minder, okay? The lid comes off, and this is sticky. Now... This is tape that I replaced. If you see, this was the original foam tape and then it became not sticky. So I put my own tape in there. I actually need to replace it. I bought the roll of double-sided foam tape that we had. This is yellow. You can see it's yellow. I bought a new roll and it came today and I don't even think this is that sticky. So, I mean, it's sticky enough that it'll hold the beads because the idea is to put it, pour the number, pour the beads in here that you're going to use. And then you put the it on your fabric close to where you're beading. And then you can just pick up a bead instead of having to hold the container. This thing is amazing. Absolutely love it. I've had it for a really long time. You can probably even make your own if you could find a box like this. Put some tape in it, slap a magnet on the back. But yeah, I bought mine. So that's what I use when I bead. Because you can see I did these beads the other day. When I work on a Mirabilia and it's on a scroll rod like this, I do my beading and backstitch as I go along. Because it is just a lot easier for me to do it that way than to try to do it all at the end. Because when you roll up, I'm very careful. Once I have beads on a project, when I roll it up, I will not roll it as tight as I normally would so it doesn't pull the beads too much. Do you know what I mean? And then I did get, well, speaking of beads. So I wanted something different to, number one, organize beads when I'm done with the project instead of just putting the Mill Hill cases in a drawer. So I found this on eBay. This is an art dot. It's actually made for diamond painting. But, and it's a lot smaller than I anticipated. I want to say it was like $7. But it has these stickers where you can write the number on it. And then each of these containers. And these fit a Mill Hill container very easy. I just pulled this whole thing out, poured the beads in, and then put the label on. So let me show you. And as you can see, there's a little carrying handle. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Let me show you the like a container that I labeled. Because I went through and I labeled 
all of the beads that I'm using for this project. So there is, this is one of the beads. I put the number on top. You just flip it open. I would pour it into that little needle minder. Done. Okay, and I did get my Petal Fairy project in the mail. So this is what Petal Fairy looks like. Love her so much. She's so pretty. And I am just stitching it just how they have it. There is a Facebook group on Facebook called like Mirabilia Conversions. And people convert the, the you know, to different things. And then this is the fabric. So this is Pole Stitches Pale Skies 14 Count Ada. Their Ada is not as soft as this Ada is, but it's still really nice. And I love the way that Pole Stitches dyes their fabric. It's not too modeled. I really love it. So I will be doing that one at some point. And, you know, conversions. I did some conversions on my own back in the day. When I did Fairy Moon, I converted her shawl that she is wearing. I think the original colors were like a dark purple. And I converted them to... Uh, like magenta like these pinks really pretty and then when I did lavender and laces Celtic autumn it was originally charted in purple and yellow I want to say if that was I know it was purples and I was like that's not fall colors fall colors are like orange yellow reds brown so I did my own conversion and a lot of people actually used it because then you were, there was no YouTube or Facebook then. We were doing blogs and we were, there was, I want to say Yahoo groups. There was some kind of Mirabilia um, board that I belonged to that you could post on. Um, also now when I stitch, what I've started doing, even though I can flip this scroll rod over, what I've started doing, because I hate flipping it over, is doing a pin stitch on the front when I end the thread. And for me, my pin stitch is coming up in the middle, going down, coming up here, going down, and then coming up one more time and cutting the thread. And what will happen is when, and I put the pin stitch where I'm going to have another stitch because the whole point is to cover it up with another stitch. And it's really easy, especially with this soft Ada, where you can easily pierce the center of it. I'm sure you will see me do one in the time in this video, maybe, because I will have to end a thread. There are a lot of colors in these flowers, and, and, and that's where I'm at. So let me... And I do a, a loop start on the front, so that's how I start my thread. So I don't have to flip my piece over at all to start or end a thread, which makes it really easy. And I have also tried to do two-handed stitching where you keep one hand up here and your other hand down below. I can't get the hang of it. I'm so slow. It's much easier to do just the stab and pull method like I'm doing right now. And I use this hand as a guide. Oh, you know what, we're gonna do the rest of these stitches. I haven't been following my like normal thing of doing a 10 by 10 square. I've just been trying to count and do as much of one color as I can when I do it. Two, two. Okay, so let's get chatting on the list <laughs> that I have for you guys today. So like I said, today is Sunday. Bill is working his 12-hour shift today from 6 to 6. Uh, we are having pulled chicken in the crock pot for dinner. So I've gotten that all situated. And I have we're going to have side salad, so I need to make those up. I'll probably make those up when this video is processing. But, you know, I just did not have it in me today to go to the grocery store. So I did Instacart. <laughs> And what's funny is there's a couple things that I get at the store that are in like weird places in the store. And so I left the shopper like three messages and she was like, no, thank you for letting me know. Because what will happen is if you, if those people don't know where stuff is, some people will just say, oh, it's not in stock when it is. So I try to help them as much as I can when I know stuff is in like a weird spot. 
So got that taken care of and, you know, did laundry. I had something for work to do today, so did that. And my job tomorrow doesn't start until 1 p.m. my time, and I'm very thankful, and I will explain why in a second. Okay, so let's go back to Friday. So Friday, I actually had a job. And I was feeling, I was sneezing, and I was like, is it allergies or is it something else? And I thought, please, God, do not let me get sick right before the retreat because that's happened in the past. Uh, there was one time I was supposed to go to a retreat in Virginia, and it would have been my first time going to that retreat, and I had to cancel the day before because I was sick, and I lost my $75 deposit, so didn't enjoy that. Um, and then there was one time I went to one of the Tangles retreats, and this was a while, a long while ago, before even before COVID. Um, I started to not feel good like Saturday evening, and I woke up early Sunday, and I'm like, I'm going home. And this was before I was going home early Sunday anyway. But yeah, I, I went home, and I just had like a sore throat and a cold, and I was like, man, I hope I didn't get anybody else sick, you know? But, um, yeah, it's awful when you um, feel like that, you know, when you get sick like that, when you have something fun or important coming up. So, yeah, Friday, but I took allergy medicine, and then I was okay. I was okay the next day. Um, my boss, though, on Thursday, her husband texted me, and that was the first time he had ever texted me in the eight years that I've been working for her. He was like, she has food poisoning. And so she's going to be, you know, out of commission today. And we didn't have a job anyway. But he was like, can you watch her email? Absolutely. Okay, here is a spot where I need to do the pin stitch. So I'm just going to pick this square because I need to end this thread. So I come up in the middle of the square. I go down in the middle of the top then I come up at the bottom, go back in the middle again, and that pretty much anchors it. And then I just come up again at that same hole, and then I'll trim that. I'll trim it. Because the thread is anchored on the back when you've done all that. And then when I do a stitch over that, it will cover that. You won't even see it. So yeah, let me highlight. I'm a highlighter. You know, I, I'm a highlighting person. I don't know how anyone stitches these mirabilias without highlighting the symbols. I would never know where I was at. So as I complete the symbols, I highlight them. And my highlighter doesn't go through the pattern. Like, I don't see it on the other side. Mirabilia patterns are usually really good quality paper. And someone had asked me, like, you know, folding and unfolding, doesn't it lose, like, do you ever have problems where this, you can't see the symbols where the crease is? I've never had that issue. And I've worked on mirabilia patterns like this every single one that I've done. I've never made a copy. I've always worked off of the original. So, okay, so Friday night, well, come to find out, my boss texted me yesterday. She thinks she had the norovirus, which comes from, like, you can get it from like oysters and she had like shellfish because she's like, now my husband is sick. And I was like, oh no. So hopefully she'll be all better by Monday because we have a job Monday. Okay. So speaking of, okay, let's do Saturday. Wait a minute. Let me find my next. I will do the symbol V, which is what, what is that? Hmm. 3708. So yesterday was April 6th, and it is Bill and I, our date anniversary, meaning the anniversary of our first date. We've been together for 15 years. So, yeah, that was something to celebrate. And then today, it's the anniversary of my grandmother's passing. So she's been gone three years. And I remember I saw my sister post it on Facebook. I just never post that stuff on Facebook. My sister and my mom always do. 
But I remembered when I saw my sister's post that it was today because I was praying that my grandmother would not pass on my anniversary, right? So yeah, today is, she's been gone for three years and it, it feels like so much longer than that. Um, I loved my grandparents very much. They were such an amazing part of my childhood, a saving grace. I know I've talked about them many, many times. They are, they are hugely missed. Um, they are hugely missed in the way they were before they got sick because my grandmother had dementia and she was not at all the person that we remember at the end. And even my grandfather wasn't just sick for a good long while. And, um, they were really generous, kind, um, and just helped you. I mean, when you needed help. And yeah, I went to their house every weekend when I was a kid. Went to bingo with my grandmother every Friday. We would go to rock and bowl on Saturday nights once I was a teenager. I mean, there were bowling and bingo. That that was what I remember most about my grandmother. And uh, yeah, I I miss them terribly. Um, I mean, my grandfather, his birthday was Easter this year. He would have been 97. So who no, no telling what he would have been like at that age. I mean, I hope if I live that long that I'm still in, you know, fairly good health and have my wits about me and all of that. So last night, now, I have been here and there eating popcorn in the evening and I'm stopping. Like last night was the last night I'm going to do it because first of all, it's higher carb and it's not good for my teeth. I always wind up getting it really stuck in my teeth. If I'm going to eat popcorn, I need to eat whole as popcorn. But I have a few crowns in my mouth, okay? And one crown that I have on the lower left of my mouth it came loose when I, this was years ago, but it came loose when I was eating like gummy candy. When you have stuff in your mouth like that, you can't eat stuff like that. You got to be really careful. I don't eat gummy candy anymore. Like that was, um, that cured that. Well, I went to floss after I ate the popcorn and I didn't even eat on that side because I, that's where my temporary crown is. For the tooth, I had the root canal on. Well, I go to floss around that permanent crown. And when I go to pull the floss out, it feels like it's catching on something or it's stuck. So I like really pull. Big mistake. I dislodged something where it then was like tight up against my other teeth. And immediately I knew something was wrong. And I was like, I said to Bill, I said, man, something's wrong with my tooth. So I was using my water pick. I was trying to gently floss. It calmed down a little bit like it's bearable. But I said, oh my God, I'm going to have to go to the dentist on Monday because this was Saturday night. And I said, you've got to be kidding me because this will be the third Monday in a row that I've gone to the dentist. Are you kidding me right now? So I told Bill, I said, well, at bedtime, I'm going to call the dentist. I'm going to leave a message that hopefully they'll get Monday morning when they come in. So Bill goes to bed at eight o'clock because he's got to get up at, you know, 4.15 for work. And so I call the dentist and right when you call and get their voicemail, it tells you at the end of your message to hit the pound key when you're done your message because that's how it saves it in their system. Well, I get through my message and what do you think I forget to do? Hit the fucking pound key. I just hang up the phone and then I immediately say, God damn it, like, oh, I was mad. I was cussing. So I had to call back because I was not sure that my message went through. And the very first thing I said, they're going to be laughing, I guess, when they hear this message. The very first thing out of my mouth was, Jesus, take the wheel. I said, this is Danielle Jones again. I just left a message, but I wasn't sure it took because I forgot to hit the pound key. 
So I had to say the whole message all over again. And in the message, I said, and if he can, I prefer that the dentist numbs me before trying to pull off that permanent crown and re-cement it and all that, because it's very sensitive. Like it can really hurt. I don't know if they'll numb me for that, but I said it in as nice a tone as possible and hopefully he will. And I'm hoping they can fit me in. That's why I said I'm thankful that my job on Monday does not start until one o'clock because I'm hoping they can fit me in in the morning before my job. But I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? Like, and I'm also hoping that the crown is not damaged in any way where they can just clean it out, clean the area and re-cement it in instead of me having to get a completely new crown. Because I don't know how old that crown is, but it's sort of old. So we will see, fingers crossed, because just paid money for a crown. Over the last like month, I've probably spent eight six hundred dollars at the dentist. And yeah, so over that. Uh but yeah, please pray. Seriously. All right, got to do down here for the V, that symbol. These flowers are really pretty. Okay, so speaking of Mirabilia's, I started looking around because I wanted, I wanted the Dreamer, which is a really pretty one. I owned it like a hundred years ago, sold it. Well, I found it on eBay. It's out of print now, but I found it on eBay for $25, which I did not think was too unreasonable because if you go to buy a Mirabilia pattern now, like on one, two, three stitch, they're like $14, $15, $16 dollars now. So something that's out of print, $25, is not out of the realm of possibility. So I bought that. I also decided I wanted Villa Mirabilia. This one's really pretty too. Now I probably would only stitch the woman in the dress, not like the outline that's behind her. So I went looking on eBay. People are smoking crack. There were people selling this pattern on eBay. $125, $130, $300, $80. Are you kidding me? No, ma'am, sir. I am not spending that for the pattern. If any of you happen to have that pattern and would be willing to sell it to me at a reasonable price, like, you know, in the $25 range, I would gladly buy it from you if you do not desire to own it anymore. I, I realize I may not ever get that pattern because I will not pay $300 for it. Maybe it'll be re-released at some point, just like Lady of the Flag was, because people were selling that for ridiculous prices, too. It's crazy. It's crazy that any, I think, any of these patterns should be out of print, but okay. Yeah, look up Villa Mirabilia. You will see. it's Her dress, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Absolutely love it. All right, I got to do another pin stitch here. Because, yeah, until I get to, like, I know you can see part of the pattern. Until I get to her dress where there are, like, big chunks of color, these flowers, it's, like, six stitches of this, five stitches of this. So a little bit tedious on this part. But, you know, it's been probably a decade since I have stitched a Mirabilia or a Nora Corbett, and I'm not hating it. I'm actually really, really enjoying it. And... Since it takes me months to do one of these, that's money not spending money, right? I haven't diamond painted in a while. I haven't diamond painted all week. I've been stitching, actually. I've been working on this. So I'm enjoying this very much. I don't know. I just haven't felt like sitting at my diamond painting table. <clears throat> but um, speaking of these kind of patterns... Have you guys ever owned or stitched a Bella Filipina pattern? She has some really gorgeous ones. 
And the ones I really love, okay, what's that symbol? The ones I really love are the um, 035. Are the the one that she has one called Poison Apple that's supposed to be Snow White. There's an Alice one that was just released. Really gorgeous. The the faces are done amazing. It's beautiful colors. A lot of them use fiberlicious fabrics, which are awesome because I love her fabrics. She uses a ton of beads in them. But I am curious without actually buying a pattern. And I even looked on Salty Yarn's website because I'm going to be there next week. They don't carry Bella Filipina, so, or at least they don't on their website. I was going to go in there and maybe buy one, but I'm curious for any of you out there that own a Bella Filipina, are the patterns, do they look similar to this? Do they look similar to a Mirabilia? I'm looking for something that's not too, too complicated, right? You know, I mean, I can follow any pattern. It's just one stitch at a time, but do you know what I'm saying? So let me know down below. Okay, let's talk books for a second. I finished reading yesterday The Hollow by Kirsten Moglin. That's her new book. Loved it. Really, really loved it. And then I went on, so this morning, I decided to go on to my Libby library app. So it's L-I-B-B-Y. And see, I had two books on hold. One is Alex Michelides' The Fury. And then the other one is Mary Kubica's new book called She's Not Sorry. And I've read every book that, that both of those authors have written. So it's really nice when you follow an author on Amazon because they will email you when they release a new book. And so I had put Mary Kubica's book on hold at the library. And when I went in, they said, oh, you get a skip the line copy, meaning I can check it out right now for 14 days. So I go to check it out and it says you have to verify your library card. So my library card number was already in there. I had to put my pin in. And it kept giving me an error saying, your library system is too overcrowded. I couldn't check the book out. I couldn't check it out. And I'm thinking that it's probably not going to be fixed until Monday, until somebody goes into the library system or something. Because it's very frustrating because now I can't check out any book from the library. And I was telling Bill about it this morning. And he's like, well, just buy it on Amazon. And I said, no, because I'm really trying to not do that. He was like, don't yell at me. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not, I'm trying to not spend money on books. Not when I can get them for free at the fucking library. So I'm going to try again tomorrow morning and hope that it's resolved. <coughs> um, so what I've been doing when I've been stitching or at night when I get in bed, like last night. I've been watching Sex and the City over again. That's now on Netflix. I've been watching Grey's Anatomy. I've also been watching um, Nurse Jackie. I actually own all of those on Prime Video on Amazon. So I've been watching those over a fantastic show if you've never seen it. But something that came back, American Horror Stories Delicate came back on. This, so this is like the second part of it. And there's only one episode a week. And I'm like, ah! So I watched the first episode a couple days ago. I like it. A lot of people don't like this season. I haven't disliked any of the seasons. Some have been weirder than others. But they're all entertaining. And it is like the only show that I don't do anything when I'm watching it. Because if you look down or blink, you're going to miss something. Now, there is one show that I actually need to start watching. Um, Cruel Summer on Hulu had a second season, and I never watched it. I loved the first season. The first season was fantastic. So no doubt that I will probably like the second season, and they're all on there. So now I can binge watch it. I just need to sit down and start watching it. And that's another show because it, it goes like... 
from the past to the present to the past to the present. So you can't look away because you will miss the transition. So I might, tonight maybe, start watching that. So we'll see. But yeah, because my tooth was, you know, all of that was bothering me last night. I just literally got in bed and went to sleep last night. Okay. Candy Crush. I've started playing Candy Crush again. I completed like 50 levels between yesterday and today. Um, I'm enjoying it very much. The only thing I don't like is that you can't play the game anymore in landscape mode. You can only do it in portrait. And I like having my case is set up for landscape mode. And I, so it's annoying, but they said that they had to take away the landscape mode for like features in the game or something like that. And, um, yeah, so that's a little bit disappointing, but I enjoy playing that game very much. Okay, work. So all of the arbitration transcripts, which there are three, they are all due next week. They're due Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I indexed one. And indexing means like I have to put exhibit descriptions and things like that. So I did one yesterday. I did one today. Just really tedious. And so I will be glad just to get that third one and be done with it. I am, I am looking forward to being done with it. And as of right now, so we have a job as of right now, Monday and Tuesday. If we don't have a job on Wednesday, which I fully expect us to have one because something, sometimes jobs come in just the day before, but if we don't, or if my job ends early on Wednesday, I am really thinking about going to the retreat on Wednesday. If they can extend my hotel reservation. Um, it's a busy time there, I think, in April. Like the hotel is booked. So I don't know if I'll be able to get in Wednesday. We'll have to see. Um, like I said, as of right now, we don't have a job, but that doesn't mean that we won't have one. So yeah, we'll see. But it would be nice to go on Wednesday, for sure. We'll see. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is on, was it, I think it was Thursday. I was, we, Bill and I had had dinner, and we were just downstairs hanging out. And I was messaging, talking to my mom on Facebook. That's how her and I communicate most of the time. And all of a sudden, she types, oh my God, we were just in a car accident. I said, what? So she doesn't write me back, obviously. So I text my sister because my sister still lives at home. And I said, are you with mom right now? I said, because she just messaged me and said they were, she was in a car accident. She's like, yeah, I'm with them. They were heading to dinner. So what happened was there is a grocery store near their house and they were just on the road and somebody pulled out of the grocery store plaza and they pulled out in front of my stepfather and he couldn't stop in time. So he wound up hitting the back right corner of their vehicle. And my mom was like, yeah, we just pulled over in the parking lot of a fast food place that was near there and we called the cops. So my mom said the next day her back was sore, but the next day I asked her how she was feeling and what was going on. And she said that they determined it was the other guy's fault, I think, but it's not all done yet. Like the, and, you know, my stepfather has to get a rental car on Monday and, um, yeah. So, but what, like, how scary, though, when she messaged me that, and I was like, um, what? Are you all right? Yeah, my sister was like, yeah, 
we've been here an hour and it took that long to get it all resolved. So, but luckily nobody was hurt, but I know they're tired of car accidents because if you remember, my sister was in one not that long ago and totaled my mom's car. So yeah, they're, they're over that. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to discuss with you guys. Just all kinds of stuff going on, right? Isn't that how life always is? You know, I tell you, the, the tedious parts of life sometimes really get to me. Like, you know, today getting up groceries and house stuff and something for work and putting stuff in the crock pot, making salads. Um, I did the dishwasher. I did laundry. Um, whole bunch of stuff, you know, I can never, and I'm sure all of you, same thing. I can never get up and just literally sit and stitch all day. The only time I could ever do that was when I was single. I remember when I was single and I lived in this really great apartment that was just about five minutes from where I currently live with Bill and it was above a business, but the apartment was really nice. It was two bedrooms so I had this real, I had a huge office. The bedroom was big. My bedroom was big. Um, a nice kitchen where it was a stackable washer and dryer in the kitchen. I had a living room, bathroom, closets. I mean, it was great. And the rent was $8.50 a month. And then I was not making what I make now. Like I'd be able to pay that rent on my own now. I mean, I paid it on my own then, but it was like, one one and a half of my paychecks took up my rent. So yeah, I was I was broke at that time. But I loved that apartment. And I remember one Saturday. Now this was before Netflix and Facebook and all that stuff. So that's when you went and got your movies from Redbox. Do you remember Redbox? I mean, Redbox still exists, but we don't even own a DVD player anymore. So I checked out, and I am not exaggerating, I watched seven movies in one day. And I literally sat in my stitching chair. I'm trying, okay. I sat in my stitching chair the whole day and stitched through seven movies. So essentially 14 hours of movies, right? And I had the best time. I am very, and I remember that was the first year that I was single at Christmas time and lived on my own. So I went to Target and got this little tiny tree that was made out of Christmas ornaments just to have something. But it was really odd waking up on Christmas Day being by myself. Um, it wasn't unpleasant. It was just odd. Um, but I loved that apartment. I only lived there a year, though, because I met Bill, and I moved in with Bill, believe it or not. I moved in with him two months after we were dating. We just knew, right? So I still had a couple months left on my apartment lease, but um, wait a minute. What am I doing? I didn't highlight all of it. Uh, my landlord let me out of my lease because he was a really nice guy, really nice person. And um, what he did was I said, do you mind just keeping my security deposit for my last month? I think I only had, yeah, it might have been just a month left over. Do you mind just keep, and he did, which was an awesome way to do it because just take that for the deposit, right? Okay, that's over here too. But yeah, um I have, I have lived in many places. Moving is a giant pain in the ass. When I was with my, after my first husband and I divorced, I had a relationship with somebody else for six years. And in those six years, I probably moved four times. A pain. I mean, a complete. And then the last time I moved, I lived two and a half hours away. So that was fun. <laughs> That was such, when I think about that time now, it was such a, oh my, trying to find an apartment. I mean, I was coming up here and staying with my mom. It took me a month to find an apartment. I was coming up here every weekend 
looking at apartments. And then finally, I found one and then lived with my then boyfriend that we were broken up. I still lived with him for a month after we broke up because I couldn't move into the apartment for a month. And we, we didn't part on bad terms. So it was doable. It was just odd. We just stayed out of each other's way, right? And um, he actually helped me move, believe it or not. So, yeah, it was just, when I think about that time, because I've been with Bill now for 15 years, it feels like that was a thousand years ago when I, like, I feel like it was just a different life because my life with Bill here, I mean, 15 years of it, right? Um, but yeah, so... But yeah, we're looking forward, like my birthday is in a month, turning 50. We are looking forward to our little weekend getaway for my birthday at Rocky Gap, which is about two hours from us, I think. It's almost like, or two and a half, it's like driving to Ocean City, but just in the other direction. And um, it's somewhere we've never been, though. I told him, I said, when we take vacations now, because after that trip... It's going to be a long while before we take a vacation um, because his daughter is getting married next year. So um, we are, and, and he's working, you know, at these jobs. So we're not going to be taking a vacation for a while. And I told him, I said, the next time we do, let's try to start going to places that we've never been. Like this will be next year. No, this year. This year will be the first year that we haven't gone to Ocean City for our anniversary, our wedding anniversary. Um, we've done that for many, many years and we're actually just tired of it. I will miss seeing Lacey and taking her to dinner, but I'll see her at the end of September for the Fall Tangles Retreat. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, Bill is going to New Orleans. His niece is getting married. Um, he is doing that in October, the beginning of October. And I'm not going because two weeks before that is when I go to the Tangles retreat. And I can't take off. Like, he has, he's going to be going, flying. He's going to be going. And it's like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I said, man, I, I, I can't take off. Or I don't want to take off that much time in the span of two weeks. And I mean, I've had the retreat plan for a year. And we just found out about this wedding like a month ago. So I already sent back the RSVP card and was like, it's just going to be Bill. Um, his daughter is actually a bridesmaid in the wedding. So her and her fiance will be going with Bill. So at least he'll have company in that regard. Um but I felt kind of bad. And I said, you're not mad that I'm not going, are you? And he was like, no, he's like, I understand it. So, but yeah. Um, so that's, you know, money that we weren't planning on spending probably cost $2,000 by the time you get flight, a car, the hotel, the wedding gift, all that. But, um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to end here, guys. This is almost 45 minutes, so that's a good chunk of time. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the different things, seeing me get a little bit of stitching done. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.